what you call an icon living Start a record label, Miss Fish just did it Woo. Nylon, couple five minutes Whoa, we up too hot in the business Woo. About to make a movie independent Woo. Need new trucks independent Woo. I need you to listen to the vision Woo. All your verses sound like dirty dishes Woo. I'm about to clean them in the kitchen Woo. And we making money by the minute Woo. I'm about to do a way different God, I am just an icon living I am just an icon living Living, I, I, icon living I am just an icon living, living. I am just an icon icon I am not a Mayan, I'm a menace It's wild, you can lie like a professor I don't got the time to put you on a stretcher Stretcher. I am here and I still flex it I am just an icon living Start a record label, Miss Fish just did it Whoa, I'm high star, cover five minutes Whoa, we are so hot in the business Whoa. Last verse was before the award show what? Icon tatted on my torso huh? Me and Moy dipping in the porso What? I ain't even taking on torso What? Uh, damn Last girl signed a divorce, so what? Now I'm focused and we about to all blow up We just trying to make the whole crowd go nice, what? Look. Very first round of the Featherweight Grand Prix uh, It's time to get to work and showcase why I'm the best in the world And it's time to go and uh, take all these guys out one at a time we, uh, we had no idea, they surprised us all With uh, who were we gonna fight We had no idea, nobody knew and that was uh, that was a neat thing. I did like that. I was uh, by surprise that they announced the fights, uh, where and when and who. And I just knew that I needed to be ready for September when they told me to. And I've been just staying ready this whole time. I'm that type of person who's always ready to fight. And my desire to fight is always there. And I knew it was inevitable that I'd fight all of these guys eventually. Whether it's in this Grand Prix or outside the Grand Prix, I knew I was gonna get matched up with one of these guys sooner or later. Oh, I'm motivated to fight those guys again. If I can get those fights back, that'd be great. If not, the biggest motivation is going out there and doing something what none of these guys can do, and that's winning the whole Grand Prix. And that right there says enough in itself because not only is, to me, the undisputed world champion, that's all that I'm fighting for. It's the only reason I'm fighting and being a part of this Grand, this grand Prix, this tournament, such a big tournament and all, for all of mixed martial arts. I mean, just Bellator, but for all of mixed martial arts, we're making, we're making noise, the, the division and the organization. So I'm very excited that I get to go out there and put it all on the line and uh, become the best in the world. The, the man who won through the Grand Prix to become world champion undisputed no no doubts no questions asked nothing he defeated everybody to to get the straps and to get the million so that's that's the only reason i'm fighting it's because i want that world title not only the actual physical belt but when you hear my name featherweight world champion is gonna go right behind that uh, everything motivates me i'm always motivated because there used to be this little saying we used to say in soccer, it doesn't matter if you scored a goal, it's still 0-0, zero, zero. the game's not over. So, that's how I feel. Uh, you never let a win get to your head, you never let a loss get to your heart. So to me, right now, it's like I'm undefeated as well too. It's like, what last fight? What fight before that? All those gave me lots of experience, but your record don't matter. Uh, all that matters is what you do here and now. And you're only as good as your last fight. So I gotta go out and be better in this next upcoming fight than I ever have been. When I, when I end up making it to the finals, uh, McKee would be a good one. Uh, but if I beat him beforehand too, that'd be even better too. That'd be even bittersweet. But uh, I don't know, man so many great fighters and this is all going to go down in a year and you never know how what's going to happen with the with these fights the way they go down some fights between guys might be wars some of them might be uh really close decisions some leave with uh no injuries no issues some are some might be fighting beat up and they need a fight and they want to become world champion so everyone's uh, fighting to the death this, this is what it seems like everyone's hungry and everybody wants this so it could be any one of these guys okay. 
growing up in the United States uh, near Illinois, Harvard, Illinois, hour away from Chicago, hour away from Milwaukee. It's, uh, it's nice. It's all the big cities that are around here. So as a kid, getting to see all these uh, different cities as a kid, you know, the, the baseball fields or school field trips to any of these places around here. And it's nice to now finally reside in Milwaukee and be considered a Milwaukee resident. And, you know, I love Milwaukee, man. Milwaukee's home now. Well, it's definitely more about the legacy. The money comes and goes. And money, you get paid for each fight. You know, you got your show money, your win money, uh, bigger promotions, you get bonus money. There's always something, right? You're sponsoring money. You're, so, you're always getting money, I guess. You can get money anywhere. So, a million? No. But the, the million is sweeter because you earned it in prize money for defeating four men to win the whole tournament, to win the whole championship. So, that's like the Super Bowl ring, man. You know, you uh, got your preliminaries, and then you got your you know, semifinals, quarter, quarterfinals, semifinals, and your finals. And it's uh, everybody's hunting that ring, right? Same thing. Well, uh, basketball only, they just play multiple games. But um, the fighting, man, it's, it's one fight and it's one night. So that's why fighting is the best thing in the world. There's nothing like fighting. Uh, again, when it comes to other professional sports, you'll have multiple games, you'll have. Uh, uh, re, uh, how do I say? More than one one chance, I guess, as well, too, to win the flip of a coin can sometimes can can win it for you. But this, the fighting is as real as it gets, and it's the the truest form of combat. And I'm out to win this whole kumite. Uh, if I wanted just money, I could have went out and been a doctor, listen to my parents and something. <laughs> but. I wanted to you know, be world champion. That's the only reason I got into the sport. And I've devoted uh, the majority of my life to this, my youth to this, my, a lot of my health, uh, finances, everything. You know, it goes into this. I, I, I've, they say don't put all your eggs in one basket, but when you want something that bad, that when you want to succeed more than you want to breathe, and that's when you'll be successful. So I know right now I've tasted some great success and done some great things in my life and accomplished great things already in my career but I still feel like I'm just getting started the best is yet to come and it's coming right now in this Grand Prix and now what a great story I get to tell with the legacy is like I said earlier the the man who who was able out of 16 guys I was able to come out on top number one out of 16 so you know out of the 16 best guys in the division the the best guys undisputed best guys the undefeated records don't matter uh, the who they fought don't matter whatever don't matter but who Bellator elected they chose the 16 best out of the division there's more fighters in our weight class but they chose to do 16 as opposed to welterweight and heavyweight where they only did eight for us the lighter weight classes we're, we're putting on something big here for for the lighter weight classes and uh, in our organization and our division and throughout the whole world and this is going to be something truly epic you know what the two oldest sports on the planet are wrestling no fighting and running Hookers. oh you either run not to be food or run right. to get your food Right. You either fight not to be food or, true, or, right? or fight. They're the two most primal things you can do. What up? Because every night I watch the fuss. I was trying to hear that. Let's say this thing will show me and turn it, but I didn't have that turn those. Yeah, so we'll show the hard again. That happened with Diaz and the fight. They had the one. You were going to show me and shoot Kula. He had the hard to start banging this one, come to the choke. Boom, right here. You're, you're banging it. Real nigga choke him. You know, so the fact that you just hold the arm to go on out and to roll through was very good. You block, you know, and then maybe uh, uh, as you might correct, to do this big right before you got you know, uh, on top and get wrong a little bit. So it's also like how cycle show is. The name already said it's a cycle show. You have to control it. At. Otherwise, you know, you're gonna try to get out of it. So once I get here, oh, come towards me. Oh, right here. The worst case in there, you try to go back, and you stay there. You know? He's smart. Let him go away from him. If you go away from him, you your back in case. You know? So here now, let's switch a little bit. We have the hat control. Alright? 
spawner's position here, had control, which is in my opinion, it's easier for him to push me and get me off. Alright, go back. One of the most uh, uh, jokes I fly in MMA, try to push it here, his head, you know, right there. The uh, army triangle choke. Alright. I really like that way I trap the left and then I turn it in. Actually, my man. G love that, you know. I think you got your second fight in your shield with the first one. No, oh, that was the LFA fight, right? Right, come on. Uh -huh. <laughs> Shut up! 
That probably is the most important part of our program to help athletes get more of what they're already doing. Um, so in terms of techniques, in terms of skill development on the mat or the cage, this stuff is paramount. And also, you can't practice, you can't play, you can't work on these techniques, so this helps with injury reduction. We worked a power development circuit where we worked on force transmission from the floor to their core through their shoulders with a cable chop series with some med ball throws. And then we finished off with a strength lift focusing on shoulder stability and movement up top. We did a little bit of a dynamic bench press to help with punching power. And then we finished with very healthy knee and hip uh, exercises. So single leg ISO, the guys love that. That helps with um, laying down and remodeling tissue for tendon joint and ligament um, development. And then we also did some glute and hamstring work. And then we finished the back end of the uh, workout with some shoulder stability, working on some cuff and some scap protraction. So it's a great workout. Again, a workout should give you more than it takes from you. And we did just that. We want these workouts to help facilitate better performance throughout their practice week and not leave them totally trashed. That's my bro, we know the lingo. What? Ain't no squeeze underneath a little bit. This stuff is gonna happen. Get close to the pelvis. Push the knee out against the band. Push exhales.
Hi, welcome to CryoFit, where we've been doing this for close to, we're getting close to eight years. Um, we were doing it before Shark Tank. Uh, we actually have uh, getting close to about 85,000 sessions. So we know what we're doing here. Uh, there's eight locations. We're the eighth here uh, in Wisconsin. There's uh, seven in Texas. And um, we get that skin temperature down to 32 degrees. Um, it's a three minute session. And what happens is once you get it down to 32 degrees, uh, your brain is tricked that you're freezing. And at that time you get in what's called cryostate. Uh, what happens is the blood rushes to the core to protect your vitals. And that's where you get those releases we're after. The first is the adrenaline release. Uh, the second is the endorphin release for pain management. The third is the 800 calorie burn, 6800 calories, because you go under recover, recovery mode from a cellular level. Then the fourth is the melatonin. It's that sleep that helps you recover faster. Um, and uh, basically, uh, we have three levels of cold. Uh, level one is around 200 below, and then it gets all the way down to around 270, okay? And at that time, during the three minutes, once you get done with cryostate, you get out, your skin goes right back to your normal temperature. Um, it's not like an ice bath, like a lot of people think. Uh, we surround you with just a gentle mist of nitrogen. We use about 8.4 liters on every freeze. And um, in regards to um, a nice bath, it drops your core temperature, which is all not that all you know good for you. While we just touch the skin temperature, we do not touch the core temperature at all, and that's what the CryoFit experience is all about.